Welcome back, boys. And a weekend of fights, huh? I didn't get to catch them. I didn't watch. I didn't and watch, neither did I. I did not watch one fight. Not one. You ain't no, you, bets? You, oh, I retired, cuz. You retired the bets? I retired, bro. I'm um only peer to peer. Um, but at the same time, no, no action. I, if I did, I probably would have lost because I probably would have picked Holly on over Catalina Vieira. So that would have been a safe bet. I probably would. I probably got bailed out by that, but not. I mean, a lot of controversy with uh that decision. Yeah, they pulling up the stats and everything. That's the part I do know about. I've seen the MMA news about uh, how people do not dis or do not agree with that uh, decision. Including Daniel Cormier. I mean, let's look at the stats. I'll pull up the stats. Total strikes, 188 to 122. Look at the significant, though. It's barely much. Maybe that takedown mattered a lot. That one takedown from uh, uh and the submission attempt. That was a hell of an attempt. Yes. The highlights I saw. She was she was very um, she was purple as my background. <laughs> yeah, the I mean, from what I read, people are arguing over octagon control time matters so much. I can't. Can you guys think of a fight that somebody won because of that? Because they were just walking forward the whole time and they won a decision from it, even though they're getting beat up. Rose between uh, Rose Carlos Bars. Oh, not because they were getting beat up though. <laughs> I was gonna say Rose Carlos Bars, but that's because nobody did anything and only one person was walking forward. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say if you, if you go by just pressure. That's it. No, and the the person pressuring are they getting damaged? Or yeah, no? they're taking all the damage. Um, I feel like Diego Sanchez probably won a couple of those. What Dillashaw's last fight? He was the one with the pressure. He he, after the fight was over, he did look like he lost the fight, but he ended up winning. Mm, Would you guys consider bad. that one? I don't know. I, I felt like I was pretty happy with that decision, from what I remember. Oh no, I thought that was Sanhagen TJ, right? I thought yeah. Sanhagen. I thought Sanhagen won that one. So yeah, I guess that's a good example. That's a great example. Yeah. I mean, damage done Sanhagen, to TJ was way well, more than uh, Sanhagen. He dropped him too. I mean, I agree, but I think uh, volume was there too. But you can't make that argument with this one either because volume and um, I think octagon control was all on Holly Holmes' side. Isn't it damage and then effective striking first and then everything else? You never know with these judges. No, I mean, but yeah, that's the other thing. Wait, and not not the, not what the judges feel, but what's the like the criteria? I don't think damage is an actual criteria. That's the thing. Because if damage was an actual criteria, then, you know, Johnny Hendricks would have defended his title once. Maybe. After he Wait, won it off George St. Pierre. Weren't those the old rules? We don't even know I, the rules no more. That was, that was, Depends on the state, yeah. the county. That was the question, because <laughs> if, if, if it's going, I think it's effective striking... I think damage has to matter for sure. I'm pretty sure it does, but if it doesn't, it should. Because um, if you have a fight ending sequence, that should mean a lot. Like if you have a, if you knock a guy down or you have them in a position where they they can be submitted, that should count for something um, toward winning the fight. Now, if we if, see like. like I don't know, man, because here's the thing. After that, the other stuff matters, but not as much. Like, if you, if you land on the strikes and you have a person in a compromised spot, 
that's two really big components of a fight. Octagon control. I mean, that's good. but if if you argue that point, where if you have to have somebody in a compromised spot, then the Nate Diaz army is right against him winning against Edwards. Because Nate Diaz was getting beat up the whole time and touched up the whole time. But the only time anyone was compromised is when Edwards almost got knocked out at the end. So if you're going over just compromising positions, Nate Diaz won against Leon Edwards. He had one moment. We still That's what I'm saying, though. But that was the only there. moment that was compromising. That's the thing we need to That's know what, what the I'm, judges I'm are like, like, looking for. They don't tell yeah. you. Yeah. Well, they tell you, but they're very vague with the old school octagon control, uh, significant strikes, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what, that was my point. I think it's it, it, Nate only had that one singular moment in the entire fight. Where, what I mean by compromised moments is like you, it's a constant. It's happening every single round or it's happening... In, at a frequency, I mean, I'm sorry, at a frequency, but at, a lot, at volume. Like, not only are you knocking them down, like if you watch the um, Izzy Gastelum fight, right? Like, there's a lot of fight ending sequences in that fight. Both sides, not exactly. on both sides, yes. Right, that's what I mean. But not just one moment, like one trailing moment, but a, a consistent like barrage of that that has to count for a lot. In a decision. Because like obviously it didn't it didn't get it wasn't a, a fight it didn't it didn't end the fight so so is uh, Vieira ready for a title shot? Let's be honest, no one's ready for a title shot in that division. I think she I'm might a, be able to beat Pena yes. though. I think she might be able to beat Pena though. Honestly, maybe Nunes. I mean, I don't oh know. my bad, I forgot Pena was the champ. <laughs> she, she might just be like her uh, Buster Douglas to Nunes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I honestly, I don't really regard her as the actual champion. So that was my, my, my slight, my bad. I forgot she was actually champion. I thought Amanda Nunes was still champ. <laughs> that is disrespectful. Can't and I am apologizing it. now. Disrespectful <laughs> to the Venezuelan princess, bro. And we underestimate how good she is. I mean, she can... Obviously, that division, it's the women's division, but there's no, like, no one's massively skilled in, what was that, 135? Yes. No yeah. one's, come on, they're, they're just, they're okay. They're all decent. Amanda can knock pretty much everyone out in that division, um, and that's why she's champ, but they ain't exact, it's not exactly jumping. And, you know, when I watched all those fights, it's like, man, they're still kind of in the like elementary stage of what a game what a game is now. They're still learning a lot. There's yeah, no they're still learning a lot. There's no dominant champion. There's no it's all still kind of a free for all. So well, can't you, can't that you was the yeah. thing though. Uh Amanda Nunes became a dominant champion because she was finally one that started to mix it all together and started to actually elevate while she was leaving everyone else in the dust. That's pretty much where it was and that's the only reason why i had that slight is because i feel like even now amanda nunez is still a couple steps above them i just think she's a little more distracted outside of the octagon and a little bit bored with being so high above in my opinion i think it was the knockouts i mean she she didn't really oh shit, we lost mark come back my brother um I think it was a knockout, personally. There he goes. We back. With the uppercut. I love it. Well, I mean, she she defended the title a bunch. She, like, took on all challengers. All right, when you think about her skill set, what's her best – what's Amanda Nunes' most redeeming quality as a fighter? I'd say her hands. Well, her striking overall, because I believe she did uh, get a head kick KO on Holly Ho. Or at least it started it off with a head kick. So her striking in general. I mean, but she also has her jujitsu. She just doesn't prefer to use it. So she's pretty well rounded. As well rounded as a female fighter gets, other than Shevchenko. 
Right. And that's like Shevchenko, I would agree. Nunez, no way. Not I think she's really good. But um it's not like she's a technical wizard. No, the actual goat in my head is definitely Shevchenko. But that's another opinion. Yeah, same. I'm just saying, like, there's there's not a <clears throat> there's not a fighter in that whole division in my, in my mind who is like a, the exp- the perfect expression of MMA at that size. They're all just kind of like decent and then good. And you got all the ones that are pretty good. I'm pretty sure they'll fight for the title. They'll get a bunch of them. They'll get a bunch of matchups. It, it reminds me of like heavyweight division for men's in like the early 2000s. There was no. I don't know if I'd say the heavyweight division, but it it reminds me of the earlier days where everyone specialized, because that's what yeah. the female divisions are right now. You don't really have true mixed mixed martial artists. You have a whole bunch of specialized fighters. Most of them are kickboxing or boxing by themselves, and then you have the random jujitsu people. There's really no one that's Some judo. got it perfect. A couple of judo players too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's 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 exactly what I mean. Like, remember when like Tim Sylvia was a heavyweight champ of UFC, like that era of heavyweights? <laughs> they were. That's that's what I that's what I think the women's division basically is at one thirty five. It's in that state. There's, um, I mean, obviously Amanda Nunes. Is, I think she's a little bit better than what Tim Sylvia was. Maybe a little bit. I'm talking about like I'd give her a lot. I'd give her better than no, Tim no, Sylvia if, was. If, if Tim Sylvia was a 78 overall as a champion, she's a 79 overall. <laughs> and I would say guys like to give you some scale. I'll say guys like Kane Velasquez is like a 95 overall. Yep. Steve Bay's like you know, like 96. Kane was a beast. Yeah. Right. Kane's still a beast. Kane injuries is what stopped Kane really. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. All those got repeated back surgeries and shit. Every yeah, I mean, I mean what injury. when you get punched in the chin and your knees blow out. I mean Well, I mean <laughs> and you and you still don't think Ngano has zero shot against anybody. It's interesting. Different say <laughs> zero shot against anybody. He's always got that one hit power or knockout power. I'm just I'm just saying. This man He's always had Bro, Ngannou did the Streets of Rage windmill to finish Rosen Strike and Rosen Strike's world class kickboxer. Hey, he just right. did like he just did. You remember, Francis said he got clipped in the uh, the side of his ear or something. That's why it looked like that because he got hit yeah. by Rosen He wasn't like swinging it. That's what he says. Okay. I mean, I'm, look, that's what he says. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what he said. Look, I give him all the credit for being the most most gradually improved like he he has gone from like no skill whatsoever just flailing punches and knocking people out to being a legit threat other than knockout power i will say that i just (laughs) but i also feel that there's not a lot to go by in the heavyweight division i got one is is his wrestling really good or is Cyril Gan's wrestling defense that bad? I argued that last last podcast. <laughs> we I will not revisit that because we will be here for five hours. Okay, okay. All right, let's let's jump to the welterweights, the other split decision of the card with uh, Ponza Nibio and is his name really Michelle? Is not Michael? I'm going with Michelle all day long. Okay. As long as he has that man bun, I am giving him Michelle. I'm gonna call him Mike, like M I C Mike Pereira, the Demolition Man. I like I that think, name better, Demolition Man. Yeah, Demolition Man. I, I think it's it actually done. like Michelle. Michelle. I don't think it's. I don't like think it's like Americanized Michelle. I think it's Michelle. Hey. To me, he's B Boy M P. Yeah. So can we call him Mitchell? No, we'll call him the Demolition Man. Call him by his tag, Demolition Man. All right, Dennis Rodman. That's translated to English. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, the dagger took on the Demolition Man, and they had a a great fight. 
That was Fight of the Night, in fact. If you guys get a chance, I'd say check that one out. That was the only one on this card that I was actually excited for, but I was out drinking. Well, supposedly yeah, after man. the victory, uh, MP decided to call out Jorge about Ooh. sliding into his wife's DMs. With the, with the prayer hands, bro. Yeah, but yes. I guess he didn't see the uh, the previous messages sent by his wife to Jorge. Because Jorge <laughs> responded. He, he had the receipts. He had the, uh, what are they called? The screenshots and all. He ain't, he, ain't, he ain't slide first. He ain't slide first? Nope. That was, that was a reply. Mm-hmm. A solid reply. That's fantastic. How are you going to slide in a female's DMs with prayer hands? What's that mean? Pray for your husband. That was said be blessing these streets. <laughs> yeah, that, I, hey, that's going to be a good fight if they make that, honestly. I really do think it's going to be a good fight. But I don't think they're going to sign him for that one just yet. Nah. He's probably yeah, going to slide into the 15, uh, top 15 rankings in welterweight, though. Probably trade spots with Ponzinibbio. Mm. That's or, good. Or he might get booted out of the 15 and uh, was it Shavkat might move up to 14 and Pereira might move into uh, 15. Yeah, I was just going to ask what is... um. What do you fit um, Shavkat into that once you um, start moving people around the, the bottom of the 15? Like in the 15, <clears throat> in the top 15, excuse me. I believe he's still undefeated, yeah. right? Yeah, he's undefeated. He needs a fight. Mm-hmm. Get this man a fight. Like, he's 100% finishing rate. Like, give this man a fight. Is he, is he getting avoided, though? I mean, because. He, he, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I think he's really getting avoided. I think uh, he's probably having the same issue as everyone in that area right now when it comes to, like, visas and shit. So oh, yeah. I don't think they where's can he, fight as often as they need to. Where, where is he fighting? Uh, I believe he's camp, Russian, he, too. He's camp, um, in the States? He's, or? No, he's from Dagestan. He's one of those Dagestani people. Right, but doesn't Khabib have Eagle FC that's in Miami? I'm pretty sure they got something. Habib has um special favors that he can call from Putin because they boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a joke. They boys. Well, so way, Ponzinibbio, he's probably sliding out and Pereira's sliding in. But who would he? I think he needs maybe one more win, and he could get Masvidal. Unless Masvidal takes him up on it, you know the UFC will do what Jorge wants, so it could happen. I don't think Masvidal will take that though. He needs a big money fight. I don't know if that's a big money fight. No, that's not a big money fight. His big money fight is uh, with Nate or Connor right now. Yeah, Nate, Connor, or I think they could coax him with a get back at Kobe, but I don't think that's ever happening. I don't even. I want to know who uh, Kobe's fighting next because the Hamzat one seems like it's off the table now. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, do you think that's really off the table though? It's kind of early, right? I mean, they were talking about the Nate Diaz, Hamzat, whatever, but I don't know if that's really going to happen or not. I don't know if Diaz really wants that smoke. He might end up fighting Gilbert Burns or something. Wait, why do you believe Diaz wants that fight? It just doesn't seem like a matchup Diaz would want. I don't know. It seems like a perfect matchup for him, though. I think he wants out of the UFC, so if they sign something or send something his way... He'll probably take it if the money's right. He probably wants to get paid, too. That's the other thing. The money has to be right. And I guess Chemayev would be the money fight. I don't know. I guess Chemayev won't take him down unless he has to. But any type of any type of person that shows that they have grappling, 
Nate Diaz doesn't really want those fights anymore. Which is weird because he's actually good at jiu-jitsu. Really good at jiu-jitsu. Like, <laughs> like, he's really good at jiu-jitsu. Like. <laughs> exactly. But he's like, fuck jiu-jitsu. Caesar Gracie's the man, but fuck jiu-jitsu. <laughs> well, here's why I think he would want that fight. If it's a five-rounder, well, I'm assuming it's going to be a main event. It has to be, right? No. It doesn't no. have to be a main event? It could be, what are you going to do with a non... Well, because... His last fight wasn't a uh, main event. It was five rounds. That's right. what I'm saying. Like a, like a, um, a non-title main event. You never know. It might be a hot be a co- that, that's not five-round fight. And that's what might be the holdup. That's what I was going to say. There you go. I was going to say yeah. that. I'm like, I think a, a five-round fight favors Nate. And maybe they, maybe it's not Nate that doesn't want the fight. That's what I was trying to say to Mark. I'm like, maybe Hamza don't want that fight. That's no. possible. Maybe he wants a three-round fight instead of a five-round fight. Because he didn't look too hot in that third round. Like He, he started looking like he was tired against Gilbert. Yeah, yeah, but he also got fucked up by Gilbert. Yes, that is very he, true. Both of those are true. But he, did yeah. fade. he was fading before the third. I, I don't know if I want to call that just his cardio or if it's just because any man that gets hit with those bombs are going to fade a little bit. Pain. Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely both. Definitely both. But that's that's what. I, well, here's the thing: if if Hamzat wants a specific matchup, that's not Nate. Because what does he gain from being Nate? I mean, some Money. maybe some maybe some fans. Well, I don't think I don't. Yeah, I'm more sure fans. Cares about, more fans. I don't think he really cares about the money part. Not that much. Like he doesn't seem like a like money's the, the biggest motivation for him. I mean, well, I mean think, think of how many people fought for the title right after beating Nate Diaz, though. So if you're going for the title fight, too, you get a name yeah. like Nate Diaz, it, it skyrocks your popularity a little bit, and yeah. you get that title fight that he's looking for. It finally did it for uh, Leon Edwards. So, <clears throat> Right. Supposedly, if that ever fucking happens. Then they said it was in August. <laughs> yeah, that, that's happening. It's just, that's, that's yeah, happening. I know. Yeah. It's in August. I'm not holding know. my breath for it, just in case something else pops up. And they're just like, ah, fuck Leon. It's been, <laughs> it's happened to him so many times in his career. <laughs> I can't. For real. That is, it's, so, it's, so, it's so crazy. Like, this dude's like, what is that? how many wins in a row does he have now? Let me look. Something silly like see him double digits. I want to no say it's way. double digits. It can't be double digits. There's no way. No, it's no, at no. least it's gotta at least be ten. Well, he had that uh, eye poke with Bilal. Bilal, yeah. So does that he was, like, stop he, it? I don't know. He but, was working. He was no. working by before that too. Bilal was, Bilal was losing that fight long sure. before that eye poke. Well, it's technically eye poke, eight. Eye poke. It's Wait, eight. that eye poke. It's eight. Hold on. That eye poke was a blessing for Bilal because he that helped him not get a, a legit L. Right. He had a way out because I thought Leon was going to – I mean, obviously, you don't know how the fuck it's going to go, but if it kept doing what it was doing, it was all Leon until the eye poke. So. Well, Bilal's in a position now where he's in the top five and he can fight Kobe, Hamzat, or Gilbert Burns. Exactly. That, that little blessing in the set. eyes, that little blessing in the eyes was like blessing the the skies, bro. Like it was right there, helped him out. I think that kept his yeah. uh, win streak for him, right? Let me check. Who? Below? Yeah, that kept his win streak too. If you don't count it, because they have it on on the UFC website as could not continue. So technically, that's a TKO, right? If you can count a toe in the eye as a TKO and a win, then you can count this. Yeah, I don't know if he beat uh, the dude he fought before Diego Lima. Wait, wait, wait. Which one's in the UFC, Diego or Doug? Diego. Diego, okay. I don't know if he beat the guy before that, but if he did, he's on a one, two, three... Seven fight win streak. So, 
And they have all been... No, not all of them. One sub. We not have Diego Lima in the UFC. Or Douglas, Douglas Lima in the UFC. He's still in Bellator, right? He's not the champion. Well, yes. Right? But he's tried to get in the UFC twice now and failed. And money. We, have, we, have to, we have to save these roster spots for, like, these young, t- hungry, talented Lions like, you know what I mean, Sam Elvey. So we don't have a, there's no, there's no room. There's no fucking room for mediocre talent in the UFC, bro. I'm sorry. I don't think that Douglas Le- or yeah, Douglas Lee was a mediocre talent, though. I think he's actually a legit talent. I think he just choked when it came to – because he lost a tough fight. So he got cut before entering the house. When he tried out for tough, and then he lost a contender series fight, right? Are you serious? Yeah. And then he became champion in Bellator. Yeah, and then he went back to Bellator and became champion again. Wow. I think he's way more than a mediocre talent. I think he's awesome. Yeah. But that was that was not directed at Lima. Sure. Oh, okay. Because I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, this this guy is legit, but yet. He chokes when it comes to the UFC or some shit. I don't. I don't fucking know. It's weird. Well, we there's a lot a of guys. Of weeks, though. That, there's a lot of people that are not in the UFC. Not a lot. There's specific people that are not in the UFC that easily could be, and a couple of them are Bellator champions. So um, correct. Yeah. Bellator has some good champs right now. We got a couple awesome. of weeks before there's a another fight card. Well, just one bye weeks. week, right? Just one. We got a bye week. Yeah. And we got some heavyweights mixing it up. Volkov and Rosenstruck. Oh man, that should be a good one. These guys are always going to be like right there almost to get the title shot and then they're going to lose to a contender and fall right back to where they're at again. I feel like that's how it is for these guys every time. They almost mm-hmm. get it. I mean, or not. It could go the way of, like, Glover to share. Like, they can get there and then lose to the champion and then eventually win it because they're both very talented. And if they, if they can continually improve and stay in the game long enough, stay healthy long enough, it's, it's did, there. Did either of y'all pull up that fight card? Nah. I see you there's laughing. There's only one fight on it. Yeah, they're the only ones fighting. It's like you guys. It's just that's it. It's five rounds. Call it a night, and that's it. Thirty minute broadcast. Yeah, ESPN no, Plus. That should be the experimental extra rounds card. Where they just <laughs> let them. Go. If it goes past five, they just keep going to round six. Like in extra rounds. This is round two seven. weeks away. <clears throat> we got, and they don't have anything more than one fight on this damn site. Gotta love the internet, bro. Gotta love it. Oh, fuck. That's amazing. There's no even shadow people or nothing. No, it's just literally one fight on there. Wow. Let me let me outsource to something other than the UFC official website I'm to see saying, if they have more on that card. Might be able to the find internet might be down space. in that specific area of the UFC like uh, headquarters. Well, whoever's in charge of the website just overlooked this one. He's like, ah. Look that fight. (laughs) He's like, like, that's two weeks away. That's way too long. Way too far in the future. Because there's actually a a good fight on the co-main event. Who's the co? Oh, that. I don't know how to say his name. Movsar Evolev against Dan Ige. Ooh, that should be really good. There's, there's some. De- oh my goodness, she's still fighting. Carolina uh, Kovalev. Ko- how, how you say? Kovalevich. Yeah, she's fighting. Uh, K- Felice. What's her name? Herring. Herring. That's the girl with the rainbow braids, right? Felice Herring still fucking fighting in the that's, UFC. That's what I'm saying. I thought she got cut. I thought she was back in Invicta. Hold on, I thought you were talking about KK got cut. When it, well, is KK still in the UFC? Because 
Yeah, she. It's been a rough, a rough little ride, ride for her. Yeah, there's some. It was. I mean, fights at one point, Buckley's on here too. Who's that? Joaquin oh, Buckley's on this card too. Nice. No way. Who's, who's his opponent? I don't see the card. Let me pull it up. Here. I thought he got uh, moved Joaquin to the Bu- uh, Calvin Cater fight. Well, like I said, I had to outsource the oh, hell the, the card, so the stuff this I'm might be a little out of wrong too. <laughs> like the UFC's official plans is apparently only one fight. So, <laughs> but the other ones y'all said also matched up with what I'm looking at. So I'm, I'm going to go with Dan Ige is actually on the card. But I have Joaquin Buckley versus Magomedov. I don't know which Magomedov this is, but a Magomedov. On the actual UFC website, Joaquin Buckley's fighting Albert Durav. Durave. Well, we do not have legitimate sources for this right now. On June 18th. <laughs> That's probably what happened to this card. They took all the fights and spread them out everywhere else. June 18th's card is actually pretty solid. It's got uh, the Cowboy Cerrone against Joe Lozon. Rescheduled for that one. Tim Means against pay-per-view? Kevin Holland. No, 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 no. It's the week after it. Oh, okay. Buckley against uh, Durive. Uh, what's this dude's name? Missile Crisis. He's fighting uh, Gregory Rodriguez. It's a decent card for a fight night. Man. It's solid. <clears throat> it is solid. <clears throat> I see. I see some good names. Some good names on this card. That one's updated April fifteenth. Oh, my boy Odie Osborne. All right, here we go. He's on there. Zara <laughs> Adeshev. Okay. That's the opponent. Mm-hmm. Oh, your girl JJ Aldridge is on this fight, too. Yeah, I saw that, too. What is up with our connections today? Mosey went breakdancing. For real, man. It's, it's been. been a, um, a rough Monday. Huh? It yeah, has man, been. Man, man. For real, bro. Shaky. Our our last one too. I had all those issues with my damn shit too. I don't know what's going on? Here we go. There he is. He's back. Oh, nope. Yeah. Nah. I mean, look. <clears throat> okay, I trust this one a little bit more. I trust Sheer Dog a little bit more than. Where were you before? Some All Stars thing. It was the first one that popped up, but it, it seemed to be the most popular. So I was like, "All right, let me check it out." Right. This one seemed, you know, people make fun of me for Sheer Dog, but they're old school and legit. So let let's be honest, they were around before anything else was. Yeah, I was on. Right. And they still keep up with all shit. I found that my card information from a, from sport, you find from yours? Sport, sportskedia.com. Sportskedia. Sportskedia. Well, it's going to be a little slow week in MMA news, probably. So we're going to have to go off like the Twitter, Twitterverse and all that stuff, right? Since we don't got to fight this weekend. We want to. Just shoot the shit too, like. Yeah. yeah but man. let's see what's going on, other than Masvidal's DMs and Holly Holm getting robbed. I'm hyped up for this pay per view, honestly. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, June's pay per view is pretty fire. And we lost Brian now. <laughs> we just playing duck duck goose with this shit at this point. <laughs> like the 
The three big fights on the pay-per-view. All solid. Talia Santos. I don't really know much about her. Do, do you, uh... Do you remember any of her fights? We've seen her fight. I, I'm pretty sure we've, we've seen, seen her, her fight. fight, but did she do anything that stood out? The fact that I remember her name, she had to do something. Okay, I remember. Okay, looking over her victories. Me... Okay, I see it now. I remember her fight against uh, Joanne Calder Wood. Wood. Mm-hmm. Change her name to Wood. I forgot. So yeah, I mean, do you think she got this rid of the just, Calder? Do you think it's just <clears> another <throat> another uh, another person getting sacrificed to the champ? Cause she's I mean, she has way. good hands. She has good hands, but I don't. I don't think anyone is on Shevchenko's level. So she's just the best in the world. She is at one twenty-five, bro. And really, she's the best female mixed martial artist. Period. So I mean, agreed. I would say her skill level is on par with the male division. At least some of them. Skill skill wise, she's yeah, on par with some of the male divisions, for sure. That's I think she's the only one. There's there, there aren't any I don't see any other women that have that level of uh like technique at all. Like I she, she, she seems to be a decision fighter except for that one choke against Calderwood. If Shevchenko is a 93 overall, the rest of the women's division are like 80s, like 81s and shit, 70s. She's a she's the best, bro. She is. I think only her and Amanda Nunes are the top of the crop, and then even then, Amanda Nunes is mostly just has size on her, and that's the only reason why she struggles with her. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. It continue to evolve but right now everybody is pretty much getting sacrificed I think if she beats her she might depending on who wins this uh, upcoming title fight because Pena and Nunes rematch on July 30th we might see her try to get that champ champ status the, the, the only like, problem with that is Shevchenko is going to do whatever she she needs to like, if they keep giving her 125 people, she's just going to keep dominating that division. And Amanda Nunes, she's up for the fight, but Dana White doesn't seem to care about that fight. So, whether they make it or not depends on him. And I don't think Amanda Nunes really wants that fight. Well, I mean... Because that's a tough fight for her for no reason. Yeah, exactly. For no reason. But there is a reason. There's always a reason. You're a prize fighter. And you're the best in the world. She we'll got to get past... Yeah. Uh, That's a, there's a huge reason. She got to get past Pena, though. Yeah, and depending on how that goes, that could become a trilogy pretty easily. Yep. It can happen. It can happen. I just... I don't know. I think, like I said, at the, I think we're underestimating the Venezuelan princess, bro. That's all I'm going to say. I will say this: Shevchenko Thank did sub Pena. That's that's really it's true. Uh, she's the best. I just I'm, she's the best. I'm sure, like I think she um, any matchup with any female in whatever division versus Valentina, I'm taking Valentina, even though she lost twice to Amanda Nunes. This is what it is. I still think she's better a better fighter. Period. I mean, shit, do you remember when they were trying to hype up Rose versus Shevchenko? Unless you want to see Rose get, like, executed, then um, it's a good matchup. You, I just saw Rose get executed in exactly. all the comments. Yeah, that's that won't, that's not going to work. No way. No way. I mean, he is taking all the slack for it. Like, I feel almost bad for Rose at this point because Esparza... Everyone already thought she was trash, so no one's giving her shit about it. But Rose is getting all the fucking trash talk and all the brunt of that. 
the worst the spars is getting is you shouldn't be champ because you're trash. <laughs> <laughs> when, when when um when you lose and then you make excuses, people are they're never gonna give you like they you gonna get just dog dog. Look how long it it took Eljo what two years almost to stop the wave. No, they still, also still hasn't shit. stopped that. Still I was like, that, that's still not done. There's I'm still the people that. out there that's like, he's not champ. <laughs> okay, but it's, it was it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Yeah, it that's was, true. It was pretty pretty brutal. He was like got the most. He, me too. I gave him some flat. We all did give him a little, give him some shit. But I gave him shit for becoming or like gloating about it and posting all that shit about it. And going from crying and throwing the belt off to look at the shit, I'm champ champ now. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you can't have it both ways. Is the only the only reason why I feel that way. You can't have it both ways because, like, if in the moment in the ring is different than when you had time to process it and then react. Right? Because, like, in the ring, a guy might like say, like, "Oh, well, they got, might get their ass kicked." You see, this happens all the time. They get worked, and you go ask them about the fight. They think they won, but that's in a moment. They go back and they have time to, you know, cool off, chill, heal. Then they watch that shit. They're like, "Okay, no, I didn't win that." All right. Does he defend against TJ though? I, um, that's a much matchup. better I mean, matchup. I, I, what's that? I said that's a much better matchup, in my opinion. He's saying, does he defend? My my answer is, um, it depends on who's getting the shot. Who's getting who's getting the title oh, shot? It's, it's, it's supposed it, to be TJ. Okay, if it is TJ, um, he can, he can beat TJ. That's what I'm saying. Like that's a better matchup. Like, I, I feel that uh, Aljamain has better odds against TJ than he did against Jan. Even if they rematch a third time. Like, I know he won the last one. I give him all the respect for winning the last one. But I think he has a better chance against TJ than he did Jan. That being said, though, I feel like they're a lot more similar than people think. So it should be a good barn burner. Yeah, I mean, I, I, agree, with you. I agree with you that they're similar. They have a lot of the same skill sets. Like, both are good wrestlers. I would say edge for submissions would probably go to Aljo. Mm -hmm. Striking, um, I would give the edge to TJ in striking offense. Agreed. Strike defense though is close, and I feel I think that fight, um, yeah, it, it, it can go. It can easily be a classic. The the one thing that TJ has going against him ever in a fight is him getting emotional. And I don't think there's anything emotional about this fight. So, he's going to get the best of TJ. Except maybe he might get tired because he's not using EPO. He's got a great uh, takedown defense, too. Correct. I was curious about that. I just looked it up. But Aljo also doesn't have to take you down to take your back. Exactly. Nope. It should be a good, interesting fight for... Whenever they make this one, I edge all Joe in that. Purely off gut feeling. Yeah, I'm gonna lean towards the Funk Master. But if yeah, he gasses thinking... though in this fight, he's gonna get tore up. Like for real, he's gonna get tore up. Right. Well, then again, <clears throat> I mean, uh, you look, never know. You... EPO TJ. Might strike again. I don't know. If you think about Aljo before the first Yan fight, I mean, he kind of he kind of changed um, Sanhagen's whole trajectory because Sanhagen refocused after that and turned into a different animal. But he's um, Aljo's on another on another level right now. He's he's one. I think he's he deserves to be the champion, and I feel like TJ is old news, bro. TJ is used to be. He, right now, I, I thought Sandhagen beat him personally with that, that, that fight. Even though he got the edge of the decision, I thought Sandhagen won. So, w can he I mean, show that championship ability again and take the belt back? Maybe. I, I don't think so, though. I think this is. 
I say solid. I think maybe. Solid maybe. Yeah. I'll give it a solid maybe. What was it two years he was out, right? Two years? Because the EPO? Mm, yeah, EPO and surgery. Well, then another surgery oh, with his knee oh. from uh, San Hagen. Well, right. Wait, what's, what's TJ's best wins? Because, like, for me, um, he, it was beautiful, everything he did with Barrage. Twice, yes. Me. Twice. Right. That was that was TJ's best moments to me. Um, The Garbrandt stuff was emotional, like you said. Yeah. Like, it's not aging well, given that how Gar- hard Garbrandt's career is going. So it was like, you know what I mean? He started it. Um, yeah. He started it, though. Like, the uh, the decline of Garbrandt, it was because of Dillashaw. Remember, yeah, he, he's the one that later. fucked him he up. He peaked on uh, no, Dominic Cruz, and then he fought TJ, and ouch. Right. That's, that's what I'm, I'm kind of saying, because like, if you think about T, even TJ, I mean, obviously he looked horrible in that weight cut versus Cejudo. Yeah. But um, before, even before, now if you look at I said, I, I, the last fight that I can remember that was any good was his effort he put against Corey Sandhagen, but I thought Corey was a better guy, and he been out since then. He been he got injured like pretty bad in that fight. So he has more to prove to me than Aljo does. I feel like this is Aljo's fight to lose, and TJ got a lot to prove. Like this, if like Mark said this, and I agree, we're we're probably going to get the best possible TJ. Cause there's no distractions. There's no. Um, there's no crazy beef. There's no in your DMs. No bullshit. It's just gonna be a fight. Yeah. So you're gonna get the better, the best version of TJ you can possibly get. I just don't know if that's enough anymore. I don't. I, don't, I think um, TJ's going this way, and the rest of the division's going this way. Do you but, think basically TJ has plateaued? Yeah, I thought he, I thought he already did. I think he. I think his last best effort. Was against um, Corral, and after that he started he started using drugs. And look, I don't care. I'm pro steroid. Use all that shit. I don't give a fuck. But at the same time, like he knows something's up. If you put something, if you you gotta use something in your body to make you stay at a, at a high level, even though you know if you get caught, you're gonna get banned. So I think he knows he's declining too. And I think at this point in their careers, all Joe's just better. At this point. Now, TJ still one of the best in the world, even saying that. So he, he got a legit shot, but he has a lot to prove. And I don't know, like if I think about all the other matchups, how does he look against Pure Young? TJ, your opinion. How, how would he look against Aldo? And right now, like even Aldo now, I don't know. Both both of those seem like coin flips at best, and that's kind of say that for about a champion then uh that's the fight I want to see personally is Dillashaw against Aldo. I, I agree with that. I wouldn't mind seeing Jan versus Aldo either, or not Jan versus TJ either. But I actually do add Jan on that fight. The Aldo fight is closer to me, but and I I want to say Aldo all day, but I don't know. I feel like he has that um. I feel like he has that camp on lock. How would you feel about a um a TJ Dillashaw versus Corey Sanhagen match? I'd be fine with that. I don't know if Sanhagen's in the right if he has the wins to back up getting a rematch with TJ right now. Yeah, he's on a he needs a win right now. I believe he's on two or three fight win streak or lose losing streak. I mean. Mm, yeah, like that. yeah, he had the cl- he had the two, two, right? And then Young, it's two or three. Young, that's it. Okay, oh, yeah, he bounced back against two, right? uh, what Frankie Edgar, right? He he bounced back after the Aljo loss. He tigered, yeah, but he, Frankie's head. Mm-hmm. You gotta remember, didn't he pull a Dan Hooker too, where he half-ass retired? San Hagen. I thought he did. Didn't he pull a Dan Hook or two? Well, I don't know. I thought he threw his gloves down and kind of quit on himself. But I might be wrong about that. Well, don't hold. I mean, like I said, in the in the moment when it's emotional in the cage, a lot of stuff can happen that doesn't, that's not true to what's reality. Um, but 
he he had two close losses um to TJ and then Jan, right? Pure Jan fight was really good too. Wasn't the the TJ fight short notice also though? The uh, San Higgins fight with Pure. No, that was a uh, or um, that was um, that was, no, that was, was Charles legit, return man. fight. They were building that. I might for just a while. be. I might just be confusing fucking San Hagen and Dan Hooker, which is fucking terrible. Their career trajectories. I might just be confusing their career tra- trajectories a little bit. Is Dan Hooker still ranked in any uh, division? Oh, yeah, he's still number 13. Yeah. I like, wait. I mean, he hasn't lost to Scrubs. Um, no, he loses to all good fighters. No, no, he's... He... I mean, both guys are um, champion and former champion, and former well, two former champions now. And then he got squeezed out by the champ. Oh, you're talking about Sandhagen Hagen now? I mean, Hagen. I was only talking about San Hagen. I was mentioning losses? like, how do you feel about a rematch between? That's in recent in recent history. In the last. Five years. I'm not, thinking his like next fight's gonna young, be Aldo. Honestly, he lost to TJ. And... That makes that, that could work. That could work. They both don't have a fight, right? Yeah, that's why I'm thinking his next fight's gonna be against Aldo, just because. Or it could actually honestly be against Marlon Vera since he just moved into the top five. He did. You know, Dominic Cruz is still out there, too. I don't know what he's got going on. Interesting. Like, this division is pretty, uh, pretty loaded, in my opinion. There's that thing it does sound. Do you think, wait, do you think Marlon will take that one, though? Because he's getting, he's streaking close to a title fight, too. He needs one to get it. That would be a one that. that I think that would put him in a title fight if he can beat Sanhagen. Sanhagen still has a name, even with his losses. Just he ain't going up right now. He needs to go down in ranking. I don't know. I think say I think he's right there in the mix. Still, he's right in the mix. Like in, in my in my mind, I, I feel like out of all the um, I mean, Pewter for real is number. He should be number two or number one, and then you got. TJ Sandhagen, that's it. In my mind, I mean, and then Marlon's, you know, on the come up. Well, the thing that's crazy though is like so, Aldo, did, like just cleaned up Vera and Rob Font with ease. Weird, you know what right? I'm saying? Like he just outskilled them. So that's why that's, I, I, and, I think Sandhagen and Aldo should fight. Just because of that, that reason alone. I, I, I left I left Aldo off on mistake. Um, that's another that's another fight where that could be a title fight too. But you never see know. him getting the title shot. We might end up seeing Dominic Cruz versus Aldo. I'd love to see that. Just old school me would love to see that. I, I do think that Dominic Cruz is like on his last stretch. To where he needs to make something happen real soon, otherwise he'll never be champ again. Yeah, he's still got Sean O'Malley out there. I'm pretty sure if he beats Pedro Munoz, he's gonna jump up a ton of spots too. And he he might get his rematch with Marlon Vera, honestly. That would be a big fight. Huge. <clears throat> now that especially because Marlon keeps winning, yeah, that's gonna be huge. Huge rematch, but <clears throat> I don't think O'Malley's. That's not for another two years, at least. Um, Don O'Malley's about due for like an ankle or a knee injury, though, isn't he? <laughs> we'll find out. Three when years. He fights man. Pedro. <laughs> Three years. There's no way they're fighting anytime soon. He's calling that man. I don't see it. Prelim Pedro. I swear these kids got them names right. They they just they just know how to do it. This younger generation of fighters, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they, they create the, the 
The memes and the sound bites. The bro. internet they kids, man. They were formed in the darkness, bro. In, in the in the troll world. Yep. They were born in that shit. Yeah. Right. Molded by it, cuz. Hmm. I, I mean, part of me thinks that I did kind of overlook all the. That's the same Sam Hagen, um, TJ, and um, Pure Young are the top three. And I, did, I mentioned Vera, but I didn't mention Aldo. I do think he should get a, a, a higher matchup. I thought his title shot chances make more sense, him versus Aljo, than TJ versus Aljo to me. TJ only won one fight coming off of the suspension. Um, and he didn't win that fight to me either. I thought because I thought San Diego won, but still, like he got the victory, so I would like to see him again before a title shot. But I mean, either way, I, I feel like that little cluster, all those guys can win it, depending on who fight too. It's that's the best, probably the best division, really, if you think about it. Like that little top five. Yeah. Like that's five potential champs. What other division can say that? There. What other division can say that? Featherweight. What's up? Featherweight? Bantamweight and Featherweight can say that. I don't know if Featherweight can say that. Is it Max and Volk? I mean, in almost any other division, Ortega would be champ too if he had that kind of skill set in a lot of other divisions. And Calvin Cater's tough, but yeah, I guess I, I wouldn't call him champ. So maybe top three for me. I mean, lightweight, man. Lightweight. You got the dominant. Lightweight has but, all the fucking but killers. But there's no champion right now. Uh, lightweight. There is a cha- Man, Oliver's a champ, bro. <laughs> he, squeezed them, he squeezed them all out, bro. He's the best. He's all over. <laughs> I, I, I think Oliver's he's just hit a different little wave right now. He he's got one more same. dude to uh, beat, and then he's, like, got it on lock. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he'd be he'd be Gaethje pretty easily, bro. And then yeah, and like th- th- that, I would have agreed with you maybe uh, like a year ago if you said that there was five guys that can be the champion at lightweight. I would I would say yeah, Poirier can be there. Poirier can get it, or um, you know, Justin Gaethje, Michael Chandler, um. Some fan fan in me might even go out on the limb and say Tony can go on the run, but really it's Islam and Charlie Olives, bro. That's it. I mean, Derry, you should. Nah, I still put Dustin up there and Justin Gaethje. I think Ju- or Olives is just on his hot streak right now. He's the and best man, other than gonna... that, Dustin should have been champ already before Olives was. Or he should have fought. He should have fought Olives for the championship the first time that when when he actually won it against Chandler. I like Dustin too. But against Chandler, yeah. I like I like Dustin though, a lot, and I got like regional bias, like you know what I mean. But it's for real. It's either you want to see what Islam can do versus like a top flight opponent. We already know he's extremely dominant, but we haven't seen him against the best in the world yet. So um, right. We I will see, but right now, Charlie Olives, bro, he's the guy. Yeah, Everybody probably, else is playing for second place. That's probably only my, a knock mind. on Islam right now, right? He hasn't fought nobody that's actually ranked in the top right. five. Well, he fought, oh, in top five, I don't think so. But he's fought at least one ranked opponent. Hooker, right? I mean, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Dan Hooker's the only one that he's fought ranked. He's he's looked damn good, so it's not like he he's he's the competition that he faced. He did what he's supposed to do. Well, I don't guess how he's I'm like, not arguing the radar that. for so long. You know well, as I mean? a champion, as a, as a, if you want to be a champion, you gotta if, if you're fighting guys that aren't the best in your division, you should be doing what he's doing right now. And that's why I feel like he's the only other guy besides Oliveira. Yeah, you know, like I feel like Charlie Olive's got it and. While Poirier and Gaethje and Chandler, they make a good like 
some good matchups between each other. But once they get there, I, I don't see any one of them beating Oliveira, man. Except maybe for yeah, because I guess you can make an argument from Darius. I guess. Um, but nah. There's only one other guy. I think Darius has a chance at Yeah, so you can make an argument. You can make an argument for Darius. I th- I but think, Darius I think is also... Him, though. I think he got his I think, too. I, think yeah. I, I lean towards... Oh, you, you lean towards him against Islam. Yeah, I, th- I think he might get him. Because if it comes to grappling, I'm going to go with Charles on that one. I'm going to go with him on yeah. that one. Yeah. And he's going to invite that in, so it's going to have to stay standing then, right? All right. I Which I give you. all of the yeah. That's that's where I'm leaning towards. If it stays standing, yeah. I'm going with Charles. Charles got power. I don't know why. Like the narrative with Charles is like he just wants to choke you out. You see what this dude's doing to people on the feet? Well, that's the thing. He, his most dangerous weapon is choking you out. He just happened to learn how to use his hands on the way. Yeah, he's, he's lighting people. He what he uh rocked Gaethje in what the first ten seconds? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He had Gage, I, Gage, he was doing a funky I, chicken, bro. It's look, and he, he's able to be very like reckless, almost like the beef. The beef stand up was never like the crispiest thing in the world, but he could take chances that other guys couldn't take because he knows beef stand up was trash. He knows well, it got better toward the, toward the later in the, the end of his career. It got better. It started off like bad. it was pretty. It was right at one point. It was. So bad. But he knows you it, no, no one's gonna keep him on the ground or take him to, to the ground. Habib's Habib's striking looked as good as it did, the same reason why Damian Myers did. His Everyone striking. was so afraid of the takedown that he opened up his striking. That's that's about it. His actual striking ability was never yeah. at most it was average. At his, most. Wait, hold on, wait. His strike defense is good. Is it strike offense? His strike defense, yes. Yeah. His offense is trash. Right. The his, offense, I'm talking strictly offense okay, okay. is trash. His strike offense was suspect, especially in the, in the beginning. But it got better. I mean, in, in, in those points when it looked really good, we did against uh, Ally. That was good. That was solid use of, like, jabs. boxing jabs and good angles. Mm. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad. I'm just saying that... <clears throat> He has the ability to be more reckless and take more chances because he, he his opponents got to come at him from one dimension, and they're always on the back foot. They're defensive. They're, they're afraid of getting taken down, so you're always backing up and trying to fight off a takedown instead of just going there with an actual get, plan to, to hit him offensively. But his strike defense is still really good, but his strike offense. His pressure's good. He's able to be reckless. So is Charles. Charles got some crazy good pressure. And he's, like, reckless as hell. He'll do, he'll do whatever. He'll throw any strike at any time. He'll do a flying knee in the middle of the cage. And then do, and no one's doing that. Like, even great strikers are – you don't see Izzy just bust out a flying knee in the middle of the cage. He's one of the best strikers in the whole UFC. So, But it's a different thing. Like, Olives, he ain't afraid of being on his back. All. In right. fact, like most guys won't even follow him to the ground. Like Gaethje dropped him and just looked at him. Let him recover. Yeah, I'm like, what? Like, who's who does that? You're not even going for, go for follow up strikes? Like, you got that much respect? I mean, I don't know if I want to argue that. The, the only thing that I have a problem with, like, how Gaethje and so many of these fighters uh, deal with that is they need to be quicker about it. Like, I hate the fact that they just stand there and stare at them, like, debating on if they're going to go down there or not when they know they're not going to go down there. It needs to be like the old school fights where you knock somebody down like that and you don't want to go down with them. You just walk the fuck away and make the ref stand them up. Like, I hate that the people sit here and play with their toes <laughs> all the fucking time. Like, I'm not going to come down there, but I'm going to wait for a stand-up while I'm playing with your toes. <laughs> like, the ref's going to take a while longer to stand you up. If you just turn your back and walk away, the ref's going to stand you all up and start the fight again. And that's what you need to do when you knock somebody out or down like that, that you want back up. Yeah. Say, so get the fuck back up. Right, right. Old school approach, back up. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's, I'm just saying it got to be a testament to like how we all of that. They're even hesitant. Like, when is Gaethje ever hesitant about anything? You know what I mean? Like, Gaethje, right. he's going in there full, like, going there blazing. And yeah, he thought about it against Oliveira. So that's why I'm saying that. Like, I think he's, he's just at a different level right now. And he, while, yeah, you can knock him down all you want, are you going to go in there? Are you going to go into his guard? Finish it off? Probably not. You think it's like, uh, like get, it's like you're gonna get finished. You think if he beats Islam, Habib comes out of retirement? No, no, no. No, I think he, Habib's retired no matter what. Habib's fat and a promoter now. UFC. He, yeah, I mean JDS just made his debut and lost. So. Oh, did you hear about that? His Little Eddie Bravo told me, uh, yeah, his shoulder fell off or something. Mm-hmm. He like, threw a what? punch. He threw a punch and his arm came out with it. Was he winning the fight? Do you do you guys know? According to B, I haven't seen the fight, but according to Habib, he said JDS looked good until the unfortunate event. But that's also what they said about Korean Zombie versus Aldo. And, then, and Korean Zombie did not look good no. until the unfortunate event. It wasn't much of a fight before that, right? It wasn't like there that was wasn't. Kind of, yeah. It was like beginning of the second round. I want to say his shoulder popped out, and then the whole rest of the time he was like trying to pop it back in, and it kept falling. I, I remember. I only saw the clip of the injury. I think the Castro was saying like hey, his shoulder. Did they, uh... he just waved it off. Did they crown a 165-pound champion yet? And what is the name of that weight class? Do you guys know? For Ego FC? No, I haven't. I don't know either one. But I have a suggestion. Junior welterweight. I thought it was called the weight class, like Mark said. The weight class. Uh, the weight class? Yeah, weight. It's like, you know, there's lightweight, welterweight. is like weight. Oh, just weight. Yeah, that's what Mark <laughs> said. It was the weight class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the weight class. Uh, junior welterweight sounds good or light welterweight? Junior welterweight has a very good ring to it. It's from boxing. Yeah. They're, they're all from boxing anyway. All those names. Lightweight, atom weight, straw weight, all that shit. It's all from I, I still think they could uh, do something, man. The UFC could add that weight class in. Are oh, you yeah. doing a shift in... Five pounds to one weight class. That's about it. You're making it every 10. Well, then until you get to 205. Yep. By that, by that point, no one cares. They're all just heavyweights. But to me, 205s are just heavyweights that aren't over 300 pounds. They're like the medium, like the, the 240s and the under. 230s, 220s. Yeah. Dudes that are too That's... big to cut down the middleweight. Right. Nobody's actually called it anything. So it's the weight class. They've just called it the 165 weight class. I mean, what is it? Wait, first of all, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point, Mark. That's a good point. Why does it have to have a name? Why does it have to have a name? That's all boxing shit anyway. Just, just make it the numbers. 135 pounds, you know, 145, wait, 125. It just makes the, it makes the title sound a little bit fancier that's about it I know. it sounds nice for saying Walter weight champ versus 165 champ i think that's more to respect the lower weight classes he was like oh you're the 125 champ instead you're the you know when they, straw uh, weight champ when they're announcing them it rolls off the tongue better for the buffers that too yeah makes sense but if we want to go with that i was gonna say Junior welterweight, that's the division. I like that name. I don't hate that name. Let's see if I can get... The weight class. The, the weight class. 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 It is the weight class. Yep, it's weight. It's weight. It's We're taking weight. the Washington approach. Normal weight. <laughs> Standard weight. What is your football team's name? We are the football team. The. There was a team, there was a football team. There was a team called the football team. 
in the NFL in Washington, D.C. So it's possible. What is Diego Sanchez fighting in? Is he fighting in the 165 division? I think so. He only, he only had that one fight, right? Did he win? He just, kept, he just fought uh, Kevin Lee, and that's it. Oh, that's the. Yeah, he did fight Kevin Lee. Okay, then it is officially called the super lightweight division. Okay. That works. Super lightweight. Super lightweight. It's the same thing. That's what it is on the Eagle FC website. It sounds more respectful than Junior Welterweight. Because Junior Welterweight still sounds like a little son, a little bit like, like, all right, little guy. Like, Junior Welterweight. Super lightweight sounds better. If you're announcing a title. I don't know. I feel like that's... It does. Yeah, I'll go with that. Sounds a little better. It's a little bit better. I think Super is just a little outdated to me. Yeah. Like, I don't really hear people all the time going like, you know what? That's Super. <laughs> we'll have a reason to use Super again, man. <laughs> Make Super, super great again. Um... It's, uh, it, look, I, I want that weight class, Michelle. I mean, I think a lot of UFC fighters in from 55 to 70 will love it. It'd be a lot, a lot of like, I, permanent homes. I say we restructure them all to fucking 10 pounds, all in the fives. Okay, 25 up. Yeah, yeah. 25, 35. Well, I mean, I guess we got to go 15 for the girls. Mm-hmm. So. 15, 25, 35, 45. I, I love the fives. You know what? And I, I also would want them to add smaller classes for the girls. Oh, one like one division? Yeah, like oh, a one Add in the atom weight? Yeah, get, get, get even lower. Micro. I don't know about the 95. Is there really a depth at 95? I know we have oh. some depth at atom weight. Hold on, wait. Uh, probably, because there's more girls that are that size than they're not. They're smaller. Wider wise though. Yeah, well, just in general. I think in uh, Asia is like a lot of the lower weight classes. Yeah, atom weight. There's there's plenty. One hundred five is like a legit class over there, yeah. and somewhat here. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they will be. Isn't I think that, that's be, where uh, Michelle easier. Watterson came from, right? Atom weight. Yeah, she used to be a one one hundred five er. She was champ at one hundred five. How is that possible? Well, she gained a lot of weight to be. Uh, the get or fight in the UFC. Did okay. she built? Yeah, she's yeah. I, I can't see her ever being a hundred. A lot of leg presses. Hundred, like her legs are like a lot of leg no presses. Way. No way she can be a hundred and five, <laughs> bro. Like, oh, you should see her old fight. She was she was skinny, skinny. Like she was small at one oh five. She bulked up a lot to be in the 115 division. I think the 105 and 95 have a better chance of being densely populated over 35 and 45. I think 35 and 45, we're going to have to wait a long time for that's, before that's a real yeah. division. We can have, the only reason why 45 is even a discussion is because of Cyborg. We can have a, and Gina Car- we can have a legitimate 95 tomorrow. Think like by the end of the year they'll figure it out. Do some contender series. You know what I mean, oh, they gotta do I think they'd be better off. Fighter. Do one ultimate fighter. Show <laughs> That's how they that. started straw weight. Exactly. Well, uh, where um, yeah, straw weight. Exactly. You do it like that. Have an ultimate fighter show with atom weights to start off with, and then work your way there. Like yeah, Adam I would go Adam like Weight before the 95s. Because at least at Adam Weight, you already have some like notable stars you could go after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might have outside some of the UFC. Weight too. There you go. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like You get more people that can, that can compete lower. And then I think you'll get a whole crop. I, I, mean, I feel like from the... What, what weight class... What actual weight are we talking about pulling from when you're talking about Populating a 95 pound division. I would say girls that are like 130 pounds and less. And that, from that, uh, they, they, they can't cut, they, they can't have the, those huge, crazy weight cuts like the men's division has, but like 
I think there's way more girls to pull from in the 120 pound, 110 area than there are at larger areas. Like if you go, if you go to like, the, so what's a you think what Amanda? I think Amanda Nunes is what like she probably walks around at what 180. 170, 180. 170, 180? I was going to say like 170. Okay, let's say 170. Probably. Let's say 170. I don't think there's that many. You're not, there's not a huge enough population to pull from of athletes from that, that area that fight at all. But you can get a lot of. No, I mean, I agree. That's why I think it's ridiculous that they were trying to promote a 45 and even. Uh, uh, PFL is trying to do a 155 division. I think is ridiculous. In all honesty, because that's why it's so shallow. Because the star day. I mean, yes, start. you do have you have two big stars in the 155 division right now, mm-hmm. but other than that, you got nothing. One well, thing is, and those two stars aren't going to fight each other here's, anytime well, soon. Well, here's there's two things. One, there's not the it's not a huge money um grab. Like you're not going to get huge payday from any of that so that's one that's one big hindrance then, you know, then the biggest i guess that's why this is one that's one thing that stands in the way but the thing that stands in the way the most is not that many girls want to fight period i mean there's some there, there is obviously like a population for it but i feel like you would feel you find that you would feel that population out better at the lower weights than you will at the higher. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that females are more interesting at the lower weight classes, definitely, and more. there's definitely going to be more depth at the lower weight classes. I don't know. I, I still think 195 would be a little too low. Like, if they want to do 105, <laughs> I think it's great. 195 just seems too low. 195 to is way too big. Zero. Like 95, 95. I, think, I mean, yeah. 95. I'm sorry. I think, 95. It's just hey, I know I'm fucking with you, bro. A little too low for me. I know I it's going to take. Man. I know it's going to take. It's going to take a, a big star in one of these uh, other promotions at one of those weight classes that make a lot of noise throughout the world. And gain a crazy following and popularity for Dana to be like, you know what? Let me let me open up this division and see what happens. That's what I think it's gonna take. Yeah. And the the problem with that is all the big stars that are making a name for themselves in that division aren't gonna leave one FC. Period. They're not going to. One FC, because they're mostly Asians, to be honest. Most of the big names over there are from Thailand or Asia. And they can get more fights in Singapore, more money in Singapore. It's They're not going to leave. My boy said Thailand or Asia. I mean, well, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. they're, they're Chinese, Stay over Japanese, there. or... Somewhere across that way. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> Thailand... Has their own like Muay Thai culture, so they're getting a lot of people from Thailand. Yeah, I mean, well, they do everything I, over there, though. It's just not MMA. Yeah, I think it just takes a spark because like women's MMA didn't even didn't have had no pull for a while until you know Rousey came around, and then they had a lot of eyes on it. Now it's a legit professional sport, like my eyes. It's more legit than WNBA, but could it be better? For sure. Like, it, I think more weight classes at the bottom would make it better because you'll get more pure, like, expression of the sport, more skill, and you'll get more and more and more, like, reps with people in the same skill level and not so much dictated by, like, just size, horsepower. Like, that's kind of what you get. Except for Shevchenko, that's pretty much what you have at the top of the women's division right now. It's like mostly specialists, not overall really good at everything mixed martial artists. They're like adequate at most of skills and then excellent at one. Except for Shevchenko, pretty much. I mean, Rose can make that argument a little bit. Yeah, I was about to say Rose and... 
the only people that I would put in that category would be literally Rose and Amanda Nunes. Whaley, Whaley kind of she she has some of it. She has. She's starting to get wrestling. Yeah, but she's getting there. I'll, I'll put her in the getting there. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the, I think the women's division, it's a, it's just a little bit behind the men's. It's, I mean, it's only been around how long? How long have we had the women's division in the UFC? Uh, 2011. Okay, so yeah, I think, right? Is that correct? A little over a decade then. So it sounds about right, like close to that range. Okay. 2012, 2011, something like that. Oh, there we lost Mark again. My, oh, there he is. Oh, I'm still here. Well, I think it can only get better, and that's just one of the ways that you can help it help it grow. Just getting more um, athletes from that that size <clears throat> into the sport. So we'll see. You guys ready to call this one? I was yeah. incorrect. What was it? Twenty. Oh, I want to say it was twenty fourteen. Fourteen? Really? Oh, so less than. It really? seems like it's, it's been around way longer than that. Does. I'm trying to find the official date now. Nope, twenty thirteen. There you go. Saturday. February 23rd of 2013. Wow. Wow. So, there you go, bro. Nine years of uh, UFC yeah. so it's, fighting. It's very, very short term. Could you imagine a men's division in the first nine years? Like, you remember? Like, you, the old school stuff? Like, that's I do what, remember the old men's division in the first nine right, years. Right, right, right. And that's, that's kind of where it's at. And I think it'll get better. More they were still shift or f- ciphering through um, <laughs> just brawlers back then. Yeah, I wouldn't even really call most of them specialists. No, nah, they were specialists though. Then you were they, the, the guys that were champions were specialists. They were like the, da- it was the guys that were thing. champions were specialists. It was good at one yeah. thing, and they had something else. They had a little bit of something else. Had a little bit of something else. Yeah, a little bit of something else. That right now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, all right, and they were all like, either grapplers or strikers. That's it. And some kind of excellent grappling skill set or some kind of excellent striking skill set. They were like average at the others at the mixing it all up part. Now everybody, even like the guys in the top ten, are pretty pretty above average, if not like really good at everything. Now in the in the UFC, even like you said, I gave Gaethje and all of a lot of shit. But skill wise, the skill gap is not far from the champion to the contenders. No gap is very small, mm-hmm. like, very narrow. All right, so you guys ready to call it? Yeah, let's call it. Yeah, man, zip it up, zip it out, okay? Zip it, do that, bye bye. Zip it, do that.